I swear this wasn't on purpose. <laughs> This album is one hell of a debut. Don't get me wrong, it's not without its misses, but when it hits, it really hits. Unfortunately, the main things that hold it back though are its inconsistencies in production and cohesive song structure. This charming man still ill and what difference does it make are such well-rounded and pop-centric songs all while being simultaneously gentle and poignant, but almost at a point of being distractingly so, because when following that I hear a track like The Hand That Rocks The Cradle, which, all while lyrically adequate, is very one note and in dire need of a chord change, I'm baffled at how the aforementioned tracks all managed to achieve far greater musical and structural diversity, each with far lesser runtime. I feel similarly toward Pretty Girls Make Graves too, which, all while being more structurally sound with clearly defined verses and choruses, just feels a little bare bones, which I think in part is due to the fact the chorus is limited to a mere lulling of falsetto, which by that point on the album you're already sick to death of for reasons I'll get to. And for a track of that length where clearly the musicianship isn't what's being showboated, judging by how minimalistic the composition is here, you sort of expect more from a lyrical standpoint than literal missing holes in the lyrics where the singer is almost humming, bringing me swiftly onto what is potentially my least favourite Smiths track of all time, which perfectly amalgamates everything I just said, a track which appears so early on that without my preconceived notions of how good the rest of this album was going to be probably would have put me off listening to the whole thing. Miserable lie. I'm not sure if Morrissey found out what singing in falsetto was the day of recording this album, but his use of it reminds me of when as a child you discover swear words for the first time and just want to blurt them all out at once. It's insufferable. And it's one thing for him to close out what difference does it make with this, where it's used more or less as an extra layer of instrumentation atop of an already masterfully composed song, but here it's literally the main attraction for two whole minutes of torture, with the instrumental doing nothing to back this up aside from during the blissful breaks. Any Muhammad. I've like to say the word, damn it! Compared to the debut, the songs here feel much more whole and vocally secure. The vocals and instrumentals didn't always flow so seamlessly on their debut, where it felt as though Morrissey's lyrics had been fully formed prior to the composition of said songs, thus making it increasingly difficult to tie them into any kind of conventional song structure, the result of which was some of the vocal melodies feeling rather plain and as though Morrissey was just meandering his way through a lot of those tracks. Here though, the vocals, particularly on Rush Home Ruffian's What She Said and Nowhere Fast, flow in a much more satisfyingly rhythmic way, which is a stark improvement on Morrissey's part, as is his seemingly newfound ability to shut up, for lack of a better term, and let the instruments do the talking, if only on occasion. Like the wondrous barbarism begins at home, whose bass solo is one big chef's kiss from me. Andy Rourke is such a staple of this band's musical finesse, and I cannot understate how effortlessly this track exemplifies that. The band have also gotten considerably better at catering the instrumental specifically to the song's lyrical focus, where on the debut it all felt a little random from track to track. Well, I Wonder and Meet His Murders instrumentals, for instance, capture so evocative and beautifully the often gloomy lyrics, aided aptly by those immensely interspersed sound effects which really transcend the songs on an emotional level. I have a slight nitpick regarding length with the headmaster ritual and that joke isn't funny anymore, nothing majorly off-putting but both their outros kind of just repeat the same motifs for an extra minute where had they been cut down the song's messages would have felt a lot more concise and less beaten into the listener. Plus Morrissey's singing on I want the one I can't have feels surprisingly tone deaf and all over the place in stark contrast with everything mentioned previously about how effortless the vocals flowed from track to track. Great album overall, though. Ali Muhammad. I've like to say the word. Damn, Damn it. <laughs> All jokes aside, this album is their undisputed masterpiece for me. Every track carries a whole different vibe while somehow flowing cohesively as part of the album's overall sound. Never have songs in such stark contrast with one another felt so seamless in their grouping on the same track list. Frankly, Mr. Shankly, Vicar in a Tutu, and Some Girls Are Bigger Than Others showcase Morrissey at his most lyrically farcical thus far, and yet somehow feel so authentic in their approach, which in part is due to Morrissey's vocal presence being, in my opinion, at its peak here, with every line delivered shamelessly sillily and as though he means every word of it. Not to mention the vast diversity within both the playing and guitar effects here, displayed most prominently and with such decadence on the opening title track, The Queen Is Dead, which, throughout the course of its incessant six minute runtime, sets the listener up excitingly for exactly what is to come. Oh, and did I mention how dark this album gets? It's one thing to have scantily interspersed goof songs, but directly alongside the depraved tragedy of I Know It's Over is just playing with my heartstrings. Need I even mention There Is A Light That Never Goes Out, a song so beautifully composed it borderline transcends the Smiths' entire discography? The only criticism I have of this album is the song Never Had No One Ever, which, if that title didn't give it away, is far from a lyrical masterpiece. And that's not to imply the likes of Some Girls Are Bigger Than Others Are, but at least they're delivered less outright bleakly and with more character than this. Not 
Not to mention its placement on the track list doesn't bode well, seeing as it's basically a B-Tech I know it's over anyway, so directly following that song really reads as an overabundance of sadness, especially on an album as sonically diverse as this. Ali Muhammad, I'd like to say the word, damn it! <laughs> Yeah, I don't know about this one, guys. Almost every song here, despite never being bad or unlistenable, just feels so inconsequential and like their ultimate potential was never met on the finalised recordings. Especially on Girlfriend in a Coma and Death at One's Elbow, two tracks which, while blissfully short compared to the drab tedium of some of the slow burners which I'll get to in a moment, just end with such urgency as if the song hadn't established half an idea before presenting a Morrissey's ego-sized middle finger to the listener. Speaking of which, this album takes one giant leap back in terms of Morrissey's overbearing vocal presence on a majority of these tracks, where as soon as the verse and chorus is established, he just washes, rinses and repeats them over and over again, often leaving little room for the band to speak for themselves, instead favouring glossy instrumental arrangements as accompaniment, which particularly on the more dour tracks like Death of a Disco Dancer and Last Night I Dreamt That Somebody Loved Me can feel a bit melodramatic considering this kind of grandiosity wasn't even needed on The Queen Is Dead because those songs had a lot more to show for, and thus can feel as if the band are overcompensating for weekly written tunes here. Ali Muhammad. I'd like to say the word, damn it! Alright, and now for the ranking coming at you in 3, 2, 1, 0. Well, thank you for watching everyone. Feel free to let me know in the comments what you thought of this video as well as your own Smiths rankings, and I will see you next time for... Brrrr... Gorillas. <laughs>